Pardon the interruption, I'm Jared Ware, and much like Alfonso Denard and Oscar Pistorius, I'm just looking to stay out of jail during this episode. Pardon the interruption, I'm Dan Charis. I think you can handle that. Unless we get into a, a little brawl. Little fisticuffs. Then, then a, a Donnie Brook. Well, <laughs> a slobber knocker. Hashtag today, boys, boys, boys. And you'll figure boys, that out later. Yeah, we'll, we'll, you'll yeah. figure that out later yeah. in the episode, we hope. If not, that's the hashtag, use it anyways. Let's get right into the first topic here. Sam. Why don't you shoot it out for us? Rick in the Little East. Right. LEC tournament underway Tuesday night. Both Rick squads. Rick men at home against UMass Dartmouth got the victory. Closer than the experts thought, but handled their business. The women went on the road to EastCon, able to beat the four-seeded Warriors. They go up to Southern Maine to take on the Huskies. The Husky men come down to Rhode Island to take on the Anchor men. What do you got in the semifinals? What do you got in the finals? Uh, unfortunately, both of these games are at the same time. Yeah. So... If you're a fan of the Huskies or the Anchor Men you're slash Anchor Woman, you're out of luck. Yep. But, you know, what do you want me to go first, men or woman? Um, get whatever. Let's go men first. We'll go right, men. I'll, be, I'll be sticking in Rhode Island, uh, so if yep. you want to join the Anchor Heads, you know where to find me. Yep. Uh, I'll be in Rhode Island. I think Rick's going to win this game against Southern Maine. No problem. Easy cakewalk. Cakewalk. And then uh, they're going to face East Kind in the finals. Rick will make the NCAA tournament regardless. But yeah. if they win the LEC tournament... They could be hosting the first round yeah. of the NCAA tournament next weekend. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Rick versus EastCon in the finals. It, that's been the final the last two years, I believe. Yeah, that sounds about right. And Rick won two years ago. Rick lost last year. So I think Rick's taken it this year. LEC champs for the men's side. The girls' side, you know, they got they got sort of the tough end of the draw in, yeah. the, uh, in the tiebreaker situation where they had to go on the road to play their first game. And they had a three-way tie for the third-place spot. They end up fifth. But if that was the case, I would have said they were going to make the LEC title game. But not anymore. I think they, I think tomorrow the the run ends okay. against a number nine nationally ranked team in Southern Maine. I mean, Rick uh, Rick could have beat them last time. They lost in yep. overtime. But uh, it's just going to be a home game for the Huskies. And you know what happens there. Yeah, I got men's side. I'm right with you. I got the anchorman handling their business tomorrow night. I think it, the Huskies came down here last week, kind of got handled. I think it'll be a closer game, tougher game, but the anchorman, too much skill, too much talent on that team. They'll get a win. And I have Keene State beating Eastern in that other semifinal. I like the way Keene plays. Rashad right inside is just a huge guy. Eastern, in general, is a good team. But Keene struggled against Plymouth State, but I think they'll figure it out Friday night. They get the win. Keene Rick finals. That'll be a great ball game. I got Rick winning that one again. Another close game. So I got the anchor men taking home an LEC crown in the men's side. Women's side. I'll go first. The other semifinal on Friday night will be UMass Dartmouth and WestCon up in Southern Maine. And I got UMass Dartmouth. Colleen Moriarty will probably be player of the year in the conference. One of the best players in the nation. Top 25 scorer in the country. She's solid. You got Borneman, Garrity, all those players that we saw play down here in that overtime game. So I got the Corsairs making the finals. Anchor Women 5:30 Friday night. Pull the upset. <laughs> beat the Huskies. Make it to the finals. Beat Dartmouth. Now they they played these two teams the last two weeks. Two overtime games. Two unbelievable games. You can check those games out on Anchor TV or Blip.TV if you want to. They're, they're uploaded. Not yet, but they will okay, be. Okay. So eventually you can check them out. But check them out if you get an opportunity because those are two great instant classic overtime games. I think those are the two turning point games in the Anchor Women's season. Yeah. They find a way to win this tournament, somehow sneak into the NCAA tournament. Beginning of the year, I had them in the NCAA tournament, losing in the first round. I have them getting there because they're going to win this tournament, but so, it's so great basketball games all the, over the you're, place. You're calling the, the Anchor Man the, double, the Anchor Woman. The double. The double dip, the double dance. The double. All right. Long way to go, a lot of basketball, but... Two schools dancing here at Rhode Island College again. It would be excellent. And like you said, men, they win the tournament, they'll be here at home, and that'll be a great experience because I expect them to win their first two games, which would both be here before they move on. So we yeah. get some NCAA tournament basketball inside the Murray Center. Yeah, can't, can't ask that. for much more than that. Anchor women will be on can the road. Can ask for a better crowd. Yeah. That, that's a given. The anchor women will be playing probably somewhere in New York. Okay. All right, next topic, Sam. You buying the hype surrounding the PC Friars? Okay, so the PC Friars, winners of yep. four of their last five. They lost last night at Syracuse. Yep. But it seems like everyone's jumping on the bandwagon. What, what are you, Warehouse? You on the bandwagon? I'm, it depends on where the bandwagon ends, what the final expectations are. They're having a nice run. Probably won't have to play that first round in the Big East tournament. Don't think they'll win the Big East tournament. Don't think they'll make the finals of the Big East tournament. 
They'll win a few games, win a game or two. Mm, outside shot of getting in the NCAA tournament, I say they get in. Maybe they win an NCAA tournament game, but if you're if, calling them to make the NCAA tournament, yeah, I'll say they get in, sneak in. They play, they finish the season strong, do enough in the in the Big East tournament, just get in. Not Are they going to be a first four team? Are they going to be uh, a not, could, not. They're like a, like a they'll be like, like a, a fourteen, 12. like a fourteen ish. Fourteen seed? Yeah, like a fourteen. <laughs> They're going to be in the play-in game, then, if they're a 14 All right. seed. Oh, I forgot about the new NCAA. The first, that's what yeah, the first, first four. four. The, yeah, that's I'll the go, first round of the NCAA. I'll go, not yeah. And then if... if whatever the whatever gets to a 12. Yeah, if a 12 gets them in, they don't have to play that first round. Then I'll go 12 for the Friars. Okay. Probably will lose. And that's not bad. I, I'd say that's not a bad season for PC. All right, all right. You're talking crazy. There's no way this team makes the okay. NCAA tournament. I don't know what these, these, these writers from the Providence Journal have been paying, but all right. Saturday, they get a good win against Notre Dame. Home win, yep. win by 20 or so. Good win. Fourth in a row in the Big East. All the wins included uh, an upset over Cincinnati yep. and a win down south at South Florida. Guess what? South Florida yeah, is the worst no team in the league, so yep. you should win that game. Yep. Good win against Cincinnati and Notre Dame. All right, cool. PC wins two games every year at home against teams that are ranked in the top 25. There's still a team that's classic Providence College. They're finally playing decent defense, but then... They were playing better than decent defense. Right. Not last night. Well, last night they were awful, but when that four-game winning streak was going on, 50 points. It, That's great. So, That's they great. still have three guards on the court at all times. They still chuck threes. They don't do anything uh, besides chuck threes, it seems like. And then the Providence Journal was just blowing this out of the water. After that Saturday win, Sunday, newspaper, return we're, return to the glory days. Tuesday, well, they're on their way. Monday, paper, return to the glory days. Tuesday in the paper. We're back to the glory days. Calm down, everybody. I, I, and, then, and then you see a question. Go on go on Projo.com. Are the Friars going to make the NCAA tournament or the NIT? They're 6-8 and eight in the Big East. It's a big Calm down. They're probably not even going to make the NIT. They're not, the, they're not making I, the, I the NIT. They're not making the NIT. I don't think. But I think, I think no way they make the NCAA tournament. I think looking at what they've done recently and seeing what uh, Coach Cooley's done in the last two years, I think you have to say... They're on their way. I mean, just to yeah, sit and say, well, all right, they're, they're still they're, average. They're, they're well, better. they were terrible before. They're getting better. They're showing improvement. It should be it should be okay to say they're getting better. We're getting closer to where we used to be, which is fine. I don't yeah, see what the used, big deal is. I don't know but when if anyone's saying they used to be. Uh, this is if, like the 1970s. If anyone's, I wasn't around. If anyone's saying all right, they're you know they're back, they're they're a great contender. Obviously, that's wrong. But to say they're on their way is perfectly fine. No, nah, it's it's not glory days. I'll tell you that. I no, I, I'm, not, I'm not. I'm not saying they're in their glory days. 1987 when Rick Pitino was in to coach. To say to say they're getting better, to say they're improving, and that there should be something you should get excited about. There's a difference between improving and this team is going to make the NCAA tournament when they're still not even 500 in the in the league. Yeah, that is true. I I got them in though. I think you got to calm down about Providence College. I think basketball. you can get excited about you them. Can I get don't excited, think but we're yeah, not, well, it's not jump for joy that they're going to go playing in March. They're not even going to make the NIT. I don't, you're saying don't even get excited about them. I, what do you? So if a team starts winning and it's showing signs of improvement, you just got to keep saying, "Well, they're they've all they're always been they're terrible." They're getting better. I'll they're give terrible. them credit for that, but it's. There's got to be the some NCAA excitement tournament. around the tournament, uh, around the program. Oh, sure. That's why the, it was sold out the other day. Everyone was going nuts yeah. from what I heard. I didn't. I didn't catch the game. Well, yeah, I didn't. So you, you, you can you uh, can right. call me out for that one, I guess. It, I I wasn't going. I read to. the game story. Next topic. Thoughts on the Celtics and the trade deadline. So the Celtics trade deadline was stay at three o'clock. Celtics, no big moves. Thought we were gonna see Rajon Rondo, maybe shipped out, maybe Kevin Garnett, maybe even Paul Pierce. Yep. Instead, they send. Leandro Barboza, who's out for the year, yep. with Jason Collins, to the Wizards for jo uh, Jordan Crawford. What do you think? What do you think about the whole the whole uh, shebang? I think it was to be expected. I think some of the moves that were being thrown around, a little far fetched. I, I don't ever expect. Well, I, I won't. I don't expect them to get rid of Pierce at any point. I think they want him to finish as a Celtic, which is fine. Garnett. You trade him, how much value does he really have? What's he really going to bring in? A player that's going to really change your future? No. Someone who can help the team out? Yeah, but if you don't really have stars in the NBA, you're not going anywhere to begin with. And then a Rondo trade just seems... I don't I don't know if I could wrap... It could happen, but I don't know if, if I could wrap my head around it. It doesn't seem plausible in my mind. A guy you traded up for or you traded around to get in the draft and a guy who is kind of the centerpiece of your franchise at the moment. And if you did trade him... Probably would be a good move, as we talked about last week. Maybe Ron was not the best best player for this team, for the system, but it just seems like a lot, a, a big star to give up. You would really have to get some something great for him. You know what I'm saying? So 
I would say this is to be expected at the trade deadline. I think the Celtics should have made a move. All we've been hearing since Danny Ainge has been the general manager is, Brett asked me if I could trade the big three, would I? And I said I would. Now he's got a big three, I guess. I mean, Ray Allen's not really on the team anymore, whatever. Yep. And he's doing nothing with it. The only trade the guy's made pretty much ruined the whole team. Yep. Kendrick Perkins, two years ago, worst trade probably in Boston history when I've been alive. Yep. So, I don't know. I think they should have traded Kevin Garnett. Got a couple starters that you can get for, like, five five or six years starters, yep. you know? If they got Eric Bledsoe from the Clippers, you could get another piece from the Clippers. Get two starters there. I didn't like the deal that was Chris Humphreys and Marshawn Brooks in a first-round pick. Whenever these first-round picks come, like, yeah. they just, they're just not even worth noting because first-round picks turn out to be nothing pretty much all the time. Yeah. Because the Nets, the Nets would have been, like, a 20th yeah. selection or something. Yeah. You know what I dislike a lot of these protected first-round picks? So if it's in the lottery, you can't get it. But yeah. if it's not in the lottery, here you go. Yeah. It's like, all right. But Leandro Barboza, the Celtics, yeah. you know what I'm going to say about them. So giving up Leandro yeah, it's Barboza been the same thing for about a year and, and a half Collins, on the show. It's not a big deal. Same from pretty much both of us, but... They haven't, they haven't exceeded our expectations, so we can keep saying the same thing. Yeah. Next topic, Sam. Thoughts on the Oscar Pistorius situation. Oscar Pistorius, arrested last week, murdered his girlfriend. He was just, you know, 12, 12 months ago, the guy was a hero. Now... 12 months? It was like six months ago. You know, sponsors pulling out all different sorts of bad things happening. What are your thoughts on that situation going on? It's down? too bad, you know, Oscar Pistorius looked... He was a popular athlete throughout the world yeah. and a popular person just for amputees yep. in general, not even athletes. Yep. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's sort of sad to see what, what happened. It is sad, yeah. so it's sort of sad. And um, I think he should be going to prison for the rest of his life. Yep. I, I've, all I've been hearing is corruption in the South African penal system, I guess, court system. And uh, it, he might not go to prison for, for life. He might not go to prison at all. Did you hear his, his, uh, his judge... The lead investigator, police investigator. Yes, he's being he's, tried for he's murder. He's being tried for murder also. So, so it's like, it, it's there's a big murder yeah. rate in South Africa. Uh, you know what he probably should have done to get out of South Africa? Maybe, I don't know. These athletes usually, if they're big name, they just come to the United States yep. and live here. You know, you'll see it with a lot of athletes and track runners from like Kenya and stuff. They'll just move to the United States. Yep. This guy had probably the opportunity. Maybe he liked being around the South African people. Or whatnot, but if he was living in the United States, I guarantee this wouldn't have happened. No, I I agree uh, with you. It, it was a lot, likely, like, a lot most, less likely. Yeah, uh, and I agree with you. It's just sad to see a guy who, you know, at the Olympics six months ago, at the pinnacle of probably the greatest achievement of his life, what he's been working so hard for, uh, all the all the fame that came with it, and seemed like a genuine, genuinely nice guy, upbeat guy during all the interviews that yeah. he had, and sort of the feature pieces of his life, and. You really all you could do was root for him, regardless of how he finished, and, and you felt good about him actually getting in and getting a shot. So for this to happen, it's happened so soon. Like this isn't like 10, 15 years after, where it's kind of like, oh, that's Oscar Pistorius, that guy, the Blade Runner guy. This is like six months after. This is pretty much in in terms sports terms. That's you know, that's quick. That's a quick turnaround to go from superstar to. You know, obviously we we can't pass judgment yet, but more than likely he did kill a lady. So you got to say he's a villain. It's just tough, rough, and you feel bad for because you know there are, as you mentioned, tons of people in a similar situation who looked up to this guy was a role model. It's just just don't look up to his sports athletes. You know, probably shouldn't. I don't know. I don't know what I was gonna say there. Yeah, athletes aren't the greatest people because they always let you down. You know, oh he took steroids, oh he cheated on his wife, oh he killed somebody. That third one was a huge leap from the other two. <laughs> yes. Definitely a big leap, true, but true. okay. Point remains the same. <laughs> I said it so nonchalantly yeah. too, which you, you get the point. Yeah, we you, you get it. Next topic. What should the Pats do with Denard? So Alfonso Denard, who we mentioned, who we've mentioned a few times on the show, pre-draft, beat up a cop, no trial or situation during the season. He plays his rookie season, looks to be a pretty nice player for this Pats defense. Arraigned, hasn't got his tri- his sentence yet, yep. but could be up to six years in prison. So if you're in the Pats front office, one side of the argument, he looked pretty good at cornerback when you had him with Tlaib, yeah. or potentially going to jail. What do you do with him? Uh, all From what I've been hearing is this guy's going to prison. Yeah. So if that's the case, cut him loose. You know, yep. he, he was okay, but the Pats secondary is awful anyways. See you later. If he gets probation, I say keep him on the team. 
That's my, that's all I got right there. Yeah. He's a good enough player where he can keep you can keep him on probation, keep him. But if he has to go to jail, it's not worth anybody's energy. I mean, you could make the argument if he's in there for ninety days, he'll be back for the regular season. Yep. So I mean, if that's the case, keep him. Also, if he's if he can, if he can play this season, yeah, keep him. If he can't, cut him. Yeah, and I think it'll be interesting to see because we haven't really had a situation of a Pats player in this sort of spot where they could spend some time in prison or anything serious like this. So it'll be interesting to see how the front office deals with it because we know the front office is, you know, all choir boys and good and just play football and keep your mouth shut. But now you have a guy who could end up in prison for an extended period uh, ex- extended period of time. 90 days, yeah, obviously take him back. A year? I don't know because you spent a seventh round pick on him. You could easily say, you know what, you're going to be a year in prison. Sorry, we like the way you played, but – we got the draft coming up, free agency. We can make moves and replace you. So, well, so pro- there's a good chance he could get uh, some punishment from Goodell. Yeah. In this, even though so it was before he was technically in the NFL. Yeah, it would be. So he'd get that year in prison or whatever. It could be 90 days a year, up to six years, whatever. Then he would get more from Goodell. So I say you have to, you would probably have to cut him loose. But it stinks because it was a, it looked like a seventh round pick, a good steal pick. It looked yeah. like he could turn out to be it, pretty solid. Because he made some great plays at cornerback and looked like, you know, he allowed us to move McCourty out, uh, to safety. Secondary looked better, obviously not great, but looked better. So, And he made some big plays, the pick six that was like 100 yards. So nice player, but good job by the Pats. You didn't spend too much on him, mm-hmm. got him for a year. Would have been nice if he actually won the Super Bowl. Then you could have said, well, we snagged him. He helped us win the Super Bowl. Great, genius move, but you didn't. So good move. Like you said, 90 days, keep him. Oh, anything over that. Sorry, you got to go. Yep, yep. All right, Sam. Are the Red Sox underdogs? So Larry Lucchino comes out last week, press conference to start the year, calls the Sox underdogs. It's been on some criticism for that. Do you think they're underdogs? No. They are, you are not an underdog if you have – if you're in one of the biggest baseball markets in the league, you can spend pretty much as much as you want. You're not the underdog. Spend the money, find players who can play, win your ball games. If you're the Boston Red Sox – Probably, arguably the second most, maybe the most popular team in the MLB. Everyone knows them. You can't, you can pretty Red much Sox go Nation. internationally and say Boston Red Sox and people know baseball, MLB, America. Yeah. You're not an underdog. I'm sorry. If you, if people know you across the nation and internationally, you're never an underdog, regardless of how good you are or how bad you are. Find a way to win ball games. So I'm not buying the underdog talk. Well, the Dallas Cowboys are the most popular team in the NFL. And, but they're never the. You're ne, you don't ever say the Cowboys are an underdog. You, you could say, say they're the, the underdog going into the division. Out of the NFC. I don't know. So that's what they said. I, I just feel like you're not really an underdog. Well, I'm gonna say that the Red Sox are the underdog. And last I checked, they were 69 win team last year, last in the division. What does that tell you? That means they're the worst team last year going into this year. So I think they are the underdog. They have an wow. they don't they don't have a good rotation whatsoever. Everyone last year had like a five ERA. John Lackey's back in the rotation. You know what you're gonna get from that guy? Awfulness. He's gonna have I feel fit, like he's gonna have hissy fits on the mound. Yeah. So there, there's John Lackey for you. Then the lineup lineup's awful. No nope, hardly yeah. any power in the lineup. Nothing to, nothing to build around really in the lineup. I mean, Jacoby Ellsbury is going to be out of here after this year. He's injury prone. D- uh, Dustin Pedroia, he's injury prone also. He's your number two hitter. Who's the number three hitter? I don't know. David Ortiz? He gets, he's injury prone too. He'll play, he'll play 100 games this year. I just think when you have the resources that the Red Sox have, I don't think you can technic- you can be an underdog. You know, like Manny Pacquiao got knocked out his, next fu- his last fight. If he comes into his next fight and is claiming he's the underdog, no one's going to believe him. You know, you can say you're the underdog, and I guess on, you know, in the odds makers books, you can be the underdog, but the court of public opinion, you're not the underdog. Well, look at the other teams in the, in the at least Tampa Bay. They got a great start in rotation every year. It seems like awful lineup, but their rotation wins them 90 games. New York Yankees, they're always in it. Toronto Blue Jays, they restocked, they reloaded. And then uh, the Baltimore Orioles. They were in the playoffs last year. When you the hear, Red Sox are just nowhere near all four of those teams. But when, you, when you hear Toronto Blue Jays, Baltimore Orioles, Boston Red Sox, you definitely don't think the Red Sox are the underdog, and that's it. Regardless of how they were, how the, all the teams were maybe last, la- year, maybe last those, year, maybe last year, but this year's a new year. It's one of those perception things where I don't think they can ever be the underdog, especially in a sport where you can spend as much money as you want. Yeah, well, there's revenue sharing. 
Yeah, still, but you can just hit the luxury tax, all that crap. You spend as much money as you want. Everyone knows that. Man. Baseball is one of those sports where it's... It's not It's not like European soccer. No, no, it's not like that. But it's the closest, you know, you said the Cowboys. Obviously, the Cowboys can't go out and spend as much money as they want. They got the, the salary cap and all that stuff. So it's a little harder for them. But even still, Cowboys, to me, not really not really an underdog. Can't be an under, I just feel like you can't be an underdog. I don't know. <laughs> Some, they, some teams they, can't they be. They sucked last year, so they're going to do this year. That's my that's yeah. my opinion. All right, Sam. Robbie Rogers is out. What are your thoughts? So uh, All right, you break it down. American midfielder Robbie Rogers came out last week, re- has retired from soccer. I don't know how long that's going to last, but what are your thoughts on this? Well, Robbie Rogers is gay. Yep. Then immediately retires. Yep. Puts it on his blog post, which is an interesting place, because who reads Robbie Rogers' blog? That's from my opinion. Yeah, now, that so, someone part. did. Uh, so yeah, Robbie Rogers, he's out. He's gay. Soccer player. It pretty much brings in the whole perspective of athletes. Yep. And what would you think if one of your teammates was homosexual? To personally, I don't care if your teammate's yep. gay. If he helps you win games, that's why you play professional sports to yep. win championships. So, if your teammate's gay, you know. But I can just, I can definitely tell you that there'll be people that don't want gay gay teammates yeah. in the locker because yep. they claim in the locker room. It's like. Ugh. I don't know. I don't think it's a big deal at all. Yep. And I wish Robbie Rogers continued to play. He got a huge outpouring of support. I don't think he got anything bad sent his way uh, from what I've seen. Yep. All the soccer players, all the U.S. national teamers, all his teammates all supported him. So I just wish he, he stuck through it and uh, continued to play soccer because he could be a real spokesperson for yep. gay athletes and maybe help more people come out. Yeah, I think uh, with the retirement... I, I think he's going to be out for a little bit, but I think he's going to try and come back. I think at 25, I think he's in the 20, 24, 25 age range, still has some years of professional athleticism in front of him. I think it's a good move to step away, take some time, do some soul searching, really figure out how you want to go from here. You know, now you have that big burden off your back, enjoy life. And I think eventually, though, that athletic, that athletic drive and the competitorism is going to say, I still got some years of playing soccer ahead of me. And you, you have that limited lifespan yeah, as an athlete. It. So I, I think you could come back. And I think that would be great, as you mentioned, for the gay community in general, as someone that they can look at, look at and say, because a lot of the time you hear these athletes who come out as gay after their career is oh, over. Yeah. So you never really hear about anyone who's homosexual while they're playing. No. So he would really be, you know, kind of the first one and one of the biggest names uh, in that, and he would be in the MLS. So I think that would be. Uh, yeah, I, th- I think I can see him coming back to an MLS team. Yeah. Gets the MLS tons of publicity. Yeah, I, I think eventually he'll come back. Might be a year from now. Depends on you know, depends on whatever you know his decision. Whatever and if he, he came wants back to, do, to so. the New England Revolution, he'd probably be the best player on the team. Yeah, probably. So good for Robbie Rogers. Hopefully he comes back. Want to want to see him come back. Mm-hmm. Because he's a pretty good, was a pretty good player for the U20s for the USA. Yeah, so. I, I I wasn't a huge fan of him on the actual national team. Yeah. If All you right. could pick one female athlete for the SI Swimsuit Edition, who would it be? All right, SI Swimsuit came out last week. Obviously, they had some athletes in there, a couple of Dutch field hockey players. Uh, they also had a surfer. Yep. I don't know any of their names. And they also had Michelle Jenicky, who made yep. the song, the 1980 song, Boys, 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 famous again last summer with her pre-hurdle routine. So, if you could pick one I think athlete, most people don't even know she didn't even compete in the Olympics. No, it was uh, it was like the under-19 world championships. I think championships. most people just assumed she was in the Olympics. What well, did not compete in the Olympics. Yes. I think that's one of point that out to the people at home. Uh, she's Australian, too. Yep. I've said on she's the show... She's pretty good. She's actually a good hurdler, really, too. Yeah, yeah. She won her heat in the video that went yep. absolutely nuts that had boys, boys, boys in the background. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Sally Pearson's an Australian hurdler who won at the Olympics, so maybe she's getting tutored by her, but... Yes. Who, who are you going with? Who are you going with with your uh, SI swimsuit gal? I think this is... T- I haven't really thought about this. Um, Catherine Webb was in there. She's not really an athlete. No, she's not an athlete. She doesn't and, know. Uh, that's AJ McCarron's girlfriend. It probably won't be for much longer, let's be honest. So I'm okay with You're that gonna move. You're going to say he's going to get engaged to her? No, she's going to move on. Let's be All honest. Right. They, all right, he's got one more year at Alabama. <laughs> He'll be the he'll be a big shot. He, he's six, got he's not six his pro six seventh like? round draft pick. Uh, yeah, yeah. You know he'll be Greg McElroy. Same uh, thing. Back up. If he goes to a bad team, he may play like two games. But yeah, yeah, yeah. she's obviously gonna move on. So the web move pretty good. And I'll, I'll go stock Alex Morgan. Women's. She's stock. already been in it. 
Put her back in. Put her back in? Yeah, you put her she in. She was in your body paint last time. Yeah. Back in body paint or back in bikinis? Whatever they want to do. Right. Whatever the creative Well, if you're the photographer, is. what do you want? Uh, Give the location, too. Give the location in the world. Bora Bora, because Bora Bora is really nice. And if it's you, cool to say. Yeah, it's great. And, and the, they also went there on uh, Keeping Up the Kardashians with Chris Humphreys with there. Did you see that? No. Oh. So people, people probably think I was. In Bora show, Bora, like, I'll go just a normal bikini in Bora Bora. Normal bikini in Bora Bora? All right. I would like to go to Bora Bora just in general. That would be a place I'd like yeah, to they go. they got those like huts that are on yeah, the water. Yeah, in the water. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Yeah. You got to uh, have money to do that, though. Yeah. Kim Kardashian lost her $75,000 earrings when Chris Humphreys <laughs> threw her in the water. Uh, yeah, all right. it, was, it was great television. I don't right. watch the show a lot. I don't <laughs> all right, watch it right, right. <laughs> But I saw okay. that and it was, it was tremendous. Uh, anyways, so I'm, I'm going to go and say I would have said Michelle Jenneke if she wasn't in it. Yeah. But she, she's in it, so thank you, Sports Illustrated. So, uh, <laughs> I don't know who I would really go with. Like It was tough for me myself. Um, you know, I thought about it and I thought about it and I thought about it. And the name that popped up into my head, I should have somebody else, but... You know, this is a this is a good choice. Alicia Sacramoni, you know, yes, gymnast okay. who went to Brown University yep. has all the Brown records in every single. Is she, still mar is she married to Brady Quinn now? Uh, she's engaged. As, okay. uh, she's she's just dating him, I think. Good for Brady. His good football Brady. career not as good, but yep. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go Alicia okay. Sacramoni. My parents watch this show religiously, so this topic not the most comfortable I've do ever. Do you want me to do camera, the location and the yeah? Go ahead. Suit? Yep. Uh, I want I want like a cool bathing suit made out of something weird, you know. Okay. A cool bathing suit made out of something weird. I don't know what. My sister made a dress because she was a fashion student at a Target gift cards. So if she wants to go Target gift cards again, my friend, my sister's friend, also actually also saw Alicia Sacramoni at a Target. So yeah, we're gonna go okay. Target gift okay. card bathing suit. Okay. And uh, what's the location? Uh, you know, maybe like uh, Alaska, like the Denali National Forest, like in the okay. summertime though. Okay. What do you think about that? One? That's an interesting shoot. Yeah. I'll say that. That was a fun topic. It, no, it was. <laughs> <laughs> next, what do we got next? Who would you choose to play a round of golf with? So we saw President Barack Obama playing a little golf with Tiger Woods. And I'm not one of those guys who gets on Barack, uh, Barack Obama for playing golf every once in a while. If, you were, if you're a regular working man, you play golf. I worked at a golf course. I see guys, regular working guys who play golf every day. So if you play golf every day and you work, you shouldn't be able to criticize the president for playing golf, but that's a different issue. Who are you playing golf with if I, you have a choice? If I have we'll a go, choice. We'll go foursome. Can we make yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a foursome. It might be the same as yours because mine, I was thinking about this and I had to go foursome. And I'm going, uh, I'm playing a round of golf with uh, Ben, Bubba, Ricky, and Hunter. That's the a golf five choice. Swim? Okay. Well, I, I, I'm the fifth. You're yeah. the fifth. So I'm going with the golf People course. People at the golf course, not going to like you, probably going to hold up play. Well, those guys are good, so you'll play I can drive. You. I can drive with those guys. Uh, Wait. Probably not Bubba. I, 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 can, I Ricky, can give it a good licking. Ricky, maybe. Rick, probably probably Ricky, because he's not a huge hitter. Ben Crane's not a big hitter. Harman's not a big hitter. Bubba, probably. Bubba, right. Bubba's a beast, yeah. Bubba. Um, also, we all got to wear our outfits. You okay. know, Bubba's in his overalls with no shoes on. Yep. Um, I don't know the other outfits, really. You got Ben Crane with, the with like, the biker, the red biker Someone's, thing. like, in an alien astronaut um, costume Ricky, or something. Ricky Fowler's got the leather. The leather, yeah. Leather look, no shirt underneath the leather jacket. Hunter Mayhan, also no shirt under like the eighties rocker. The eighties rocker, yeah. For I'm going I'm going boots and bolo when I'm with him. Okay. And maybe we can chit chat during our during our uh, eighteen and maybe get another video going, you know? Maybe I can be the fifth member of the golf boys. Okay. I, I like that pick. That's a great pick. That would be a fun time. My foursome would be obviously obviously I'm in it, so three other people. Gotta go Tiger, because he's great. And it would be awesome just to watch him play golf just next to him. And just to see him do what he does best would just be unbelievable. Yep. Then you got to get Jack Nicholas in there. And then you hope that the those two, man. you hope that they start getting real competitive. They get, they're they the get ultimate some, some side bets going. And they get into it. And obviously Jack, an older, older gentleman, but you kind of even the playing field with the tee situation. And you figure out a way where you can get them competing against each other. Just to watch that right there as a mental battle would just be unbelievable. Fourth. Justin Timberlake, avid golfer, would be very fun to have JT in your group. I think it'd be a fun time. Yeah. Talk about in sync. Talk about his solo career. Talk about his life. So you get the competition with Jack and Tiger. Hang out with JT. Talk to Tiger a little bit. Not so much, but because he'd be side. he'd be in the zone. Because those two would be going at it. Jack would, is a nice guy. Seemed like he would talk to you. Tiger would be, you know, probably five feet in front of you, walking off, getting ready. Yeah. Wants to beat Jack, but 
That would be my foursome. Are you gonna have a caddy? Who's caddying for you? Uh, just some local kid at the. You're gonna get. The Actually, local? no. I don't like caddying. I've had one kid caddy for me. It's very uncomfortable. I just would rather ca carry my own bag. It's very what? weird. It's you're gonna very carry weird. your own bag? In yeah, this? very weird. We'll be honest. You'll probably take a cart so you can sit next to one of these. I people. like walking. I'm a I'm a walker. I'm a walker off, myself, so and I carry my throw own the bag. bag. I've on. caddied before. It's weird. I've caddied before, and it can get weird. I don't. I didn't like it. it in in a competitive event, if it was like a friend who was like. Yeah, I want a caddy for you. Fine, but if it's just like, because you just get matched up with random people, like yeah. I gotta carry your bags, and it's like this is awkward. I and don't want. You got you got like five hundred dollar clubs right here, yeah. plus like a two hundred dollar driver, and then if you, if you get these, if you got one of these private clubs, all these guys want the advantage now. So at the golf course I carry that they had the pins with the little laser beams on it, yeah, and you get the little gizmo going. Could you tell me how far that is instead of walking it off from the sprinkler heads? Yeah. So you gotta get the gizmo out, shoot it. 157, sir. Yeah. All right, yeah, hand, me, hand me my 9 wedge or my 9 iron. Okay, here you go, buddy. Good luck into the green with that. <laughs> that's that's weird. That would be weird. I don't like that. that would Remi be reminiscing on the old caddy days. Best job I ever had. All right. It wasn't really a job. I didn't get taxed for it. We got the final topic here. What What's we your got? favorite sports movie? All right, Warehouse. So Oscars. the Oscars are coming up this Sunday. We'll, we'll get into that later. But this Sunday, it begs the question... Favorite sports movie? This is tough. A lot of great sports movies out there. I like, personally, I like Friday Night Lights. thought that's a great, great sports flick. Great flick. Uh, also, like, you know, Miracle's great. Um, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of The Replacements, a little funnier, but a, a great sport, great football movie. I'm going to throw Replacements up there with Keanu Reeves. You're, I've never seen a replacement. I think it's a, it's a good movie. I think it's funny. I'll put The Replacements up there near the top. That's, that's your number one? Yeah, I'll go replace I could go I could give you like 15 sports movies that are just classics, you know? Do you want me to name the classics off or you just want to go one? Go Do whatever you want to do here. Uh, so class, give, yeah, go cla classics. classics, classics, we're looking at, um, we're looking, can't even think of one now. Caddyshack's a classic, Never Bull Durham's it. a classic. Never seen it. Uh, let me see here. Miracle, like you said, Friday Night Lights, Remember the Titans. Yes. Who oh, yeah, Dreams doesn't yes. get the publicity it deserves. Yes, yep. Brink. Yeah, that's close. I'll give it to that's you. That's a classic. I'll give it to you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but my number one sports movie of all time, if you haven't guessed it by now, The Mighty Ducks Trilogy. So it's three movies. I, okay. I went three there, not one. If I had to pick one, it'd probably be D2. I think everyone would pick D2. D2, The Mighty Ducks. Uh, Team USA going all the way. Yep. Um, one's probably the, the worst. Three's probably the second best slash second worst because mm -hmm. it's right in the middle there. So Mighty Ducks, just great characters, you, you know. You see them grow up pretty much. I mean, they start in District 5, get Gordon Bombay on board, then Team USA Hockey, Gordon Bombay again, and then you get Coach O'Ryan, Eden Hall, Eden Hall Mighty Ducks. Mm -hmm. They get a change from the Warriors to the Mighty Ducks. Great lines throughout the movies, great characters. Favorite character, Greg Goldberg. Second favorite. I don't really have a second favorite. It's just Greg Goldberg. That's, that's not a bad pick there. All right. Well... If you want to know what I'm going to be doing on the Oscar night, or what Jared's going to be doing on the Oscar night, we are going to be going to the Student Union Cafe. Well, Oscar viewing party. And we're going to go to the Oscars viewing party. Might have some uh, trick-or-treat stuff for everybody. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't know if trick-or-treat stuff's the right word, but we're going to have some treats. For sure, we'll have treats. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll watch the Oscars, which I've only watched the Oscars like once, and that was last year. Play some, play a little Oscar bingo. Break, yep. gra break out our anchor newspapers. Yep. Play some Oscar bingo. So if you want to come join us Sunday, might be the place to be Saturday. The anchor men went on Friday. Obviously, come. you can go. Actually, you can join Dan Friday inside the Murray Center if you want to get into that. Saturday, if they win, the full anchorhead crew will be there. We're doing a little split anchorhead action. We're sending a crew up. To Southern Maine. You know what I thought about is is like the girls team will probably talk to the guys team after, and the the girls will be like, there was like three random Neds and whatever main main people use for their word Ned. Yeah. Probably not Ned. There was just three random Neds that were body painting and chanting the whole time at our games, and then the men's team when they hear that from the girls team, are gonna say there was like fifty body painting 50, Neds. 50, <laughs> fifty is a, in a huge exaggeration. <laughs> Uh, right. If you guys get five people, that's a that's a huge win. There's like 50 chest painted people <laughs> at, at Rick chanting against us, and then they'll just be like, you know what? It must have been the anchor heads. Anchor heads. Dual action. We're not afraid to go up north into the great wild that is 
Not well. Portland, Maine's not that far up there. Portland, Maine's still pretty, pretty southern civilized. Once you get up past there, you're going into unforeseen territory. No offense to people from Maine. There, Maine, Maine's a big state. Huge. Very big. Huge. So you pretty much fit like all of New England in that thing. So that's all we well, got here. Besides, besides Maine. Yeah. The other five <laughs> states. I had to clarify. <laughs> we gotta say thanks to yep. Matt Furtado and Sam Allen. Yep. Doing that thing back there. Yep. We pretty much set it up on our own today, so that was pretty impressive. Thanks to Brian Christie also. Thanks, everyone, for stopping in. Thanks, you guys, for tuning in. Check out the Anchor Heads tomorrow night, 550 Rendezvous, body paint. If you don't want to body paint, that's totally cool. We're going to be up in the stands getting it going at 6 o'clock. And then, right. and then 530 Championship game Saturday. We're expecting them. I'm, I'm pretty, everyone's expecting the Anchor Men to be in that championship Well, game, we expected so. them to win the other day. And Expectations, so. Weeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm banking on Saturday. I'm banking on it. I'm, I'm putting in, I would bet well, on I, it. I don't know what you're doing Saturday because you might as well just get a hotel room because you picked the anchor uh, over to win. Probably, uh, probably not going to stay up if they do win that game. But Friday night game will be fun to go to. Hostile territory. Tip your waiters. See you later.